let's talk about Solstice. This is a double A title from 2022 and it's a Devil May Cry style hack and slash, but with combos, a super move meter, and giving you a score at the end of each fight. You take control of Briar in tandem with her sister Loot, and overcome hordes of zombies, spirits, and possessed beings alike. The game takes a lot stylistically from Berserk and Claymore, to the point that one side character is just guts. I mean, come on, he's just guts. So you're slish slash, sluice slicing, and that's all fun and good, but does the game engage you enough in its world and gameplay to stick you through towards the end? Let's talk about that. Graphically, Solstice is solid, but nothing to write home about. It ticks all the necessary boxes. Are my character as well as all the enemies on screen visually clear to me? Check. Are the environments interesting to look at even if they're not breathtaking? Check. Did I fall in love with the main character right away? Check. Sometimes things get a bit muddy here and there and I definitely wish we had a wider range of colors throughout the world. I know that's difficult since the entire game takes place during a snowstorm, but it still gets quite stale to look at. In terms of enemies though, well, these blue and red crystal fellas are a key component to the gameplay, so we'll talk more about them later. But I do really like their raw designs, and it helped a lot making the gameplay look more clear visually. Whenever I'm fighting the more basic enemies, as in ones without these colorful crystal guys, I definitely noticed the game started to look like a big blob of gray and brown. But again, you're mostly fighting the crystal dudes for two thirds of the game, so it's okay. So what about the actual designs themselves? I think they range from okay to fairly interesting. Nothing groundbreaking here unless you've never read Berserk or Claymore. I think those crystal monsters in particular are great designs that really elevate the game and make you remember it better, as annoying as some of them are to fight. The whole red crystal look gave them a lot of flexibility to do weird stuff with the designs, which I very much approve of. Although more human characters like Loot, Briar, Donovan, yeah, they're pretty boring looking. That said, I do love Briar's eye patch. Now to touch on sound quality. In the water, there's a movable bridge. If we can raise it, there's crystals everywhere. That won't be easy. <laughs> not... And I gotta be honest right off the bat, the music in this game was a huge surprise. Of course, it's your typical bombastic affair, as you'd expect from a game like this, but actually, it focuses more on some crunchy electronic stuff, too. It really was a treat to listen to, it made some of those later, harder fights more palatable when I replayed them after I died. If you're into video game soundtracks, some songs to check out would be Ildenmere Bridge, Lowtown, Colossus, and The Cathedral of Guiding Light. Other sounds are mostly just okay, though. Hit sounds from things like your sword and the hammer and other weapons you get along your journey are just passable. Most of them sound a little low res and tinny, especially those big boxing gloves. Voice work is also a mixed bag. The very talented Stephanie Houston voices two main characters, that being Briar and Loot. She does a solid job as Briar, she sometimes sounds a little stilted, but mostly good, but she absolutely kills it as Briar's sister Loot, that ghost girl on the cover. It may just be because of the vocal filter, but the voice work on Loot remained convincing and entertaining throughout. Most other characters have rather poor voice work. Most lines feel very forced, and as expected in a fantasy world, they all have some sort of Eastern Hemisphere accent. And seriously, what's up with that? Well, I digress. I bring that up because the voice actors are clearly putting on an accent. It's not their natural way of speaking, and it shows. This is most clearly shown in a recurring side character named Leighton. His voice work just did not hit, and almost every other side character is the same way. I think definitely not Guts over here is the worst one though. Ugh, such a basic voice. But let's get to the important stuff now, gameplay. This is your typical hack and slash fare. You have a basic weapon on your light attack, and then you have a series of other weapons on your heavy attack. And of course, the light attack is used in combination with the heavy attacks to keep your chains going. Which heavy weapon you use, of course, is dependent on who you're fighting. Kind of. You see, one issue with this game right off the bat is while there are six total alternate weapons here, you really only need the first one you get, which is that hammer. Even when chatting with people on the Solstice subreddit, everyone says, just spam the hammer. And I'm not gonna lie, they're 100% right. None of these fists, gun thingies that have these really cool backfire effect where at the end of a combo you push yourself away from enemies. This can be useful since it's quite difficult to time your attacks with the enemies. So this kind of times your dodges for you. And that's all cool and fun and stuff, but really the big draw here is the auras. You can put out a blue or a red aura. If an enemy has no color, you can hit them at any time with no problem. But remember those color-coded enemies with red and blue colors respectively? You need to have your blue aura out to do damage to the blue enemies, and the red aura out to do damage to the red enemies. And of course, you cannot have both auras out at the same time, and they eventually run out and go on cooldown. The most obvious next sentence in all the world is to tell you that yes, there are many, many fights with both red and blue enemies at the same time, making you pick and choose who to focus on. 
that increases this game's difficulty by a lot. There's a lot of little micromanaging here. And now, before we go further, that is the point of the game. Now, you don't have to cycle between the two auras every single fight, but the general idea here is that if it's a hard fight, it's because you have to use both auras effectively in order to have a chance of winning the fight. This is where people start to not like the game. Having to micromanage these auras just to even hit enemies, not just like get bonus damage or something, can be a real pain. This though is where I think some gamers actually missed the mark a bit, since I really didn't have any issue with this aura system at all. There's a skill tree in this game, well actually several skill trees as you'd expect, and you can enhance both Briar, the one who does all the attacking, and Loot, who does all the blocking, counterattacks, and is the one giving out the aura. So for me, it sounds like some gamers were either not upgrading loot enough or upgrading the wrong things on her. Because once you really get into upgrading the auras, it's very rare for you to actually lose the aura. That is to say, run out of duration, since you can maintain the auras by successfully hitting enemies. Now don't get me wrong, all of these systems are awfully layered and complex, and investing in the incorrect skills can make the game harder when there's no need for it to be harder. So I agree that the game definitely could have used a bit less stuff in loot's skill tree. I mean, just look at it. Although in my view, overall, these systems did make the game feel very unique despite wearing its influences on its sleeve. However, other aura-related features don't work so well. There are these little landmines for both types of auras. The blue ones will explode if you don't use the blue aura on them, and the red ones will explode if you do use the red aura. So this adds another layer. These landmines will be scattered around or even spawned by enemies in a given location. So you also have to play hot potato with these mines as well as the enemies. Now, does this get overwhelming later in the game? Definitely. It's on the north side of excessive for sure. But again, for me, it added to the tension even though it was a little overwhelming at times. Now, where this doesn't work, like at all, is when these mines are scattered throughout the game's exploration and platforming sections. Like for instance, you have to break a red crystal, but there's those blue landmines around. In these situations, which happen way too often, you have to use the red aura, hit the crystal, go onto blue aura to stop the landmines, then red aura to kill the crystal, and then blue again to stop the mine. It's way too excessive and drags out moments that should be 3 seconds to like 10 or 15 seconds, and make you take damage obviously if you mistime it. And let's talk about that other aspect here, the platforming. Ugh. It's easily the worst part of the game. The camera is consistently good in combat, but it's very transparent that the camera is placed intentionally to making judging jumps difficult. Not every time, but in the second half of the game it is extremely easy to miss jumps in the stupidest way as possible. And of course, as you can see, the platforming uses the blue aura system as well, so you have to manage your aura while platforming. Those two things together, a consistently bad camera angle when platforming and requiring to manage your aura while managing said camera makes platforming such a chore. So in short, combat good, exploration bad. And luckily for this game it does focus more on combat than exploration. After talking about the worst part of the game, let's talk about the best part, the story. Now again, the voice acting is hit and miss when it's not the main two characters talking, but luckily they are who the game focuses in on the most, obviously. The long and short of the game is, no spoilers here of course, racing to the center of a city to seal up something called a void rip, which is essentially corrupting and enslaving the city's population and creatures. And this is mostly where the game's enemies come from. But as is with most stories, that's not what the game is really about. It's about untangling the story of the two sisters as they both find out more about each other while they were still alive. And of course, slowly drip feeding us into understanding fully what their situation is right now and why they're there. Because obviously, if you didn't guess, Loot, uh, she ain't alive. So the story answers questions about how the two became linked, how Loot died, and of course the final twist of why Briar, Loot, and the other side characters are involved in this story in the first place. It's a very solid story, however my only real complaint here is not the pacing itself, which is actually fine, it's just too long. The game runs about 14 to 17 hours, which is just a bit too much. For 3 or 4 hours less and this game would have been much more impactful. And naturally one of the biggest padding here is the very hard fights you'll take time to get right, and that's okay, but the stupid platforming will pad out the game just as much. And that's definitely the most annoying thing about the game, it feels let down by very avoidable flaws. So let's talk about value for money then. There's a lot of action-packed chapters that I'll be replaying, but so many chapters are completely spoiled by the unnecessary platforming sections, and of course the worst part of that being that the later, more engaging and difficult fights are surrounded with the worst of the platforming sections. So replayability is really hurt here, because as I mentioned earlier, it's not knowing how to platform in the game, it's the godforsaken camera that makes your platforming ability a total dice roll. It's a hard game to recommend then. It has so many painful sections, but a majority is rip-roaring fun and a compelling story. But there's the elephant in the room of whether or not you'll enjoy that aura system. Working both for and against Solstice is the fact that no game has a system exactly like this, making it unique, but also impossible to know for sure if you'll like it until you try it. I'd say Solstice is a solid $15-$20 to $20 game. 
If you make it to the end, you'll be very satisfied, but there's no guarantee it won't annoy you into submission and make you quit before you really get the story going and let it sink its hooks into you. That's all I have on Solstice for now. Thank you for watching.